long time ago, nearly 200 years, white fella come from this funny little camp in Sydney to this place, the Blue Mountains. They were looking for more land to feed the funny looking animals and places to grow their own food. A lot of white fellas tried to cross this beautiful, rugged old mountain, kept running in the cliff and going home again. Blacksland, Lawson and Wentworth made it across in 1813. They were local fellas from Emu Plains and only ones with enough brains to watch us black fellas coming and going along the ridge, which lead from east to west. Major trading route for Aboriginal people for thousands of years. The most beautiful spiritual mountains you'll ever see. Come and have a look. My people call what I'm doing walkabout. White fella call it bushwalking. Best way to see the boy. Birds, the animals, and everything. Wattle, the colour of Australia. If you're out and about early, you might be lucky enough to see the magic mist of the mountains. pours in like a misty waterfall over Naranek into the Jamison Valley.
There's tracks all over the mountains. Take you just about anywhere you want to go. The majesty of the mountains draws you in. It seems to go on forever. It makes you want to grab it and hug it or hang off it. or jump right into it. Me, I just love looking at it and feeling it. The mystery of the misty mountains. The spirit is everywhere. Do you want to know why the Blue Mountains are blue? <laughs> I don't know myself. <laughs> They tell me it's the sun shining through a vapour given off by the gum trees. I'm looking for a special place now. Not far, I hope. Maybe just around the corner. Nope. Oh, well. <laughs> Up here. Off we go again. The big bad Banksia man. Giddy, I found it. <laughs> Janole and Kane. Better off driving now. Bloody long walk. 
known by Aborigines as Binamia, meaning dark places. I think Janolan is a white man's word meaning dark places with electric lights in them. So you can see the beautiful limestone formation. This place is like fairyland. I don't know about you, Mom, but I wore my leg to the stump walking to Janolan Cave yesterday. There's a place from around here called Megalong Valley. But I'm going to sit down and take it easy and let the old mate Bert and the mob from Pack Saddlers do the work today. Ah, uh, well, it was back in the early 1960s when we started uh, Pax Adler's. Our family settled in Burragarang in 1830, and around 1905, my father and my grandfather took up this land here. Originally, it was for running cattle. Nowadays, Pax Adler's is our main business, taking people into country, unchanged since the old days. We call this country the Wild Dog Mountains. Our family have been riding this country 
out here for over 150 years. Not a bad effort. Here we have people here from all walks of life, really. And uh, they haven't got to be a horse rider to uh, do in, to go out and enjoy themselves here for a day. As a matter of fact, I can uh, tell you a yarn about a uh, chap that booked in here about two years ago. And he was a man, 82 years of age, never sat on a horse in his life before. And we took him out into the, into the bush here on a full day's ride. And he said it was the best day he ever had in his life and he could still walk straight when he came home. <laughs> Beautiful starlit night when the smell of gum leaves so clean and clear. You could eat it, set up camp, cook yourself in tucker, have a cup of billy tea, stretch out on the ground in your swag, and go into your own drink time. But if you're like me working on this film, Food and accommodation thrown in? Wow. You'll be mad not to stay here. Fabulous old guest house, like Glenella. Back in the last century, the rich types of Sydney liked nothing better than a trip to the mountains by train. To enjoy the comforts of lavish hotels, and quaint guest houses. I got that last line from a tour guide. Not bad, eh? Lavish hotel, and quaint guest houses. <laughs> this old estate is Lorella. Still the same as the day it was built. Yester Grange at Wetworth Falls. You can poke around their fabulous collections of antiques and follow that up with Devonshire tea. Don't drop in one of those lovely old tea rooms and the tea and it's gone. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> you listen out. Mmm, melts in your mouth. And gets in your beard. Jane, what's gone, please? Got the whole tribe coming. Beautiful old buildings all over the mountains. They always get you in. You can't help stopping and scratching your head in wonder and thinking about the old days. White man collected all these rocks and made their own little stone caves. They call this place Hartley Village. Courthouse is set up just like it was way back when. Hey, quick, quick. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God? 
you can have a browse of the old records and find out what strife they all got up to. The President Thomas Smith is found guilty as charged, and he says it's on that account to a corporal punishment of 25 lashes on the back and 25 lashes on the back. And how they ended up here, in the slammer. When this stuff was a tree, Blackland, Lawson and Wentworth made their mark on it. Because it is an important part of history, people through the years have been doing their best to preserve it. Pity the explorers didn't make their mark on all the trees, eh? Lennox Bridge. Oldest bridge in Australia. Built by convicts in quick time back in 1833. In the 1800s, everything built quick time by convict labour. In the 1900s, everything built slow time by union labour. <laughs> Remember the good old days when you used to go to the pictures to see two fields for the price of one ticket. And you didn't have to go outside to buy your lollies or chocolate. Welcome to the good old days. Welcome to the Mount Vic Flex. G'day, Diane. Can I have two snake and one green frog, please? Thank okay. you. Ah, what are you doing when you see a snake? Eat it. <laughs> well, here we go. The zigzag railway is strictly for kids. Kids who love old steam trains. Young kids. And old kids like me. To get down the steep western side, the zigzag was built in the 1860s. Do you want to know how the zigzag works? I'll tell you. The engine pulls the train down one long straight section. Zig! The engine unhooks and goes to the other end of the train and pulls it down the next section. Zag! When it opened in 1869, it was hailed as an engineering marvel. Great rock cuttings were carved out. Tunnels were built. Viaducts were crafted out of sandstone, featuring beautiful archways. My old dad used to work in the railway when I was a kid, and that's why I love these steam trains. Modern trains don't use the zigzag anymore. It's a thing of the past. The 
two lovely old steam trains are a thing of the past too. A thing of the past that has been restored for all of us to enjoy. Well into the future. Scenic railway at Katoomba is great. A ride on this old girl is like being thrown off a cliff without the horrible bump at the bottom. It's not really a railway. It was originally an old trolley used for hauling coal out of the Jamison Valley years ago. Blow the coal out, coat of paint, throw some tourists in and bob for your ankle. A whole new industry. Why try to fly when you could take the skyway? <laughs> the three sisters. Long, long time ago, way back in Koori dream time, the Katoomba tribe, they camped in the valley. Three beautiful sisters lived with them. Menai, Wimala, and Ganatu. For a long time, they've been falling in love with three brothers from the Nepean tribe. It against tribal law for them to get married, cause they all wrong skin. So old tribal elders, they decide that the sisters not allowed to see the brothers no more. The brothers, these fellas, were brave warriors and they start big mob tribal war to get the sisters. This make old elder from the Katoomba tribe turn the sisters into stone and wait for the fight to finish up so he can turn them back again. But sad thing happened. Old Elder, that fella, he gets killed in the fight. And nobody, nobody knows how to break the spell to turn the Sisters of Dawn back to women again. Aborigines have left their mark all over the mountains. My people painted with ochre, the colours of the earth. Central painting are the work of a white fella called Norman Lindsay. The 
creation of Norman came out of his paintbrush and flowed freely over his canvas. Old Norman went off into dream time a few years back, but his house is now a museum full of his creations. gives you the feeling that he's still here. Norman knew of a good place to camp to get the right atmosphere, a mountain retreat at Springwood. Norman used cold, hard concrete to make warm, soft sculptures. celebrate your fest. Some sort of Christmas dinner. Better people can have their Christmas put without sweat on their plate. Well, tonight, your fest at the Victoria and Albert Cast House. Come on in. Come on in.
In the mountains, the seasons are strong like England, where the white man first came from. So they made lots of beautiful old English style gardens that have rich, colourful flowers in the springtime. Leaves that change colour and fall off in the autumn. The gardeners are more than happy for you to stroll around their beautiful pathways, dripping with flowers and plants. Above the ashes, straight and tall, through ferns with moisture dripping, I climb beneath the sandstone wall, my feet on mosses slipping. Like ramparts round the valley's edge, the tinted cliffs are standing, with many a broken wall and ledge, and many a rocky landing. And round about their rugged feet, deep ferny dells are hidden in shadowed depths whence dust and heat are banished and forbidden. The stream that, crooning to itself, comes down a tireless rover, flows calmly to the rocky shelf, and there leaps bravely over. Lost in spray when mountain breezes sally, the water strikes the rock midway and leaps into the valley. Now in the west, the colors change, the blue with crimson blending. Behind the far dividing range, the sun is fast descending. I'm going to get Fair Deacon with you now. This place, the Blue Mountains, a special place, strong spirit. You don't have to be an Aborigine to feel it. Everybody that comes here, black, white or brindle, feels it. 
Most of them come from strange places called cities, where the earth is covered by buildings and concrete. How little trees and plants manage to pop up wherever they find some dirt. People come up here from a place like Sydney, because people like nature. They belong to it. Thank goodness the beautiful blue mountains aren't that far away. Come up here and touch this place with your fingers and your heart, with your feet and your mind. Don't hurt it. It's for you and your children. You don't have to own it. Just look after it and it will look after you. Aboriginal people always known to protect the earth. That is our spirit. Mm -hmm.